Welcome to another video. This video is going to be all about the workflow that we do with our photo editor. This also applies to video editing, but today specifically we're going to be talking about photo editors. We're going to be going over finding photo editors, setting up a test for them, figuring out uploading, figuring out communication, payment, and delivery. So I'm trying to cover A to Z here everything that you need to know to hire a photo editor, work with them and get your final product delivered to your clients. All right, so the very first thing is finding the photo editor. You kind of need that before we worry about any of the other steps. So the way that I suggest to do that is to go into real estate photography groups and put a question in there, just say, does anybody know or recommend a good photo editor? And that will allow people in the group to comment on it and say who they like. And then it will also allow all of the photo editors in there to comment on it and say, hey, pick me, pick me. There's gonna be a lot of people that comment on that. Um, and you can also look back in those groups and just search, you know, uh, basically the question that you would ask and just see the other people that asked the question. After that, you need to set up a test to find out who is a good photo editor and who has good communication. These are the questions that you need to ask. Are you ready? You need to know what is the standard pricing. And remember, pricing is negotiable. They might say $1.25. You say, no, 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 let's do 75 cents. Or maybe uh, you do a different price for HDR photos versus single exposure photos. Um, you can figure that out afterwards, but a good starting question is, what's your standard pricing from there you need to ask what is your turnaround time turnaround time is super important if they say 24 to 48 hours really not fast enough at least for most of us you really want to be a 12 hour turnaround period we're typically sending photos off to the photo editor around 6 to 8 p.m hour time uh, my photo editor is in vietnam and so they need to be able to turn it around to where we're having the photos by about 9 a.m. the next day. That allows us to kind of put our final touches on it and still get the photos delivered within a good period of time to our clients. The next question is how many photos uh, or how many houses, I should say, can you handle in a day? Really important, if it's just a single photo editor, um, you know, maybe they can handle up to two to three. It depends on the volume that you're doing right now, of course, but you will want to make sure that they can handle a good amount of photos, a good amount of houses in a day, because as you are growing your business, uh, maybe you hire another photographer and you are doing maybe eight to 10 houses in a day, you wanna know that your photo editor can handle that and that you're not just like, uh, real buried in the weeds. After that, you need to know what is their preferred payment method. A lot of times they will be uh, PayPal. That's a pretty typical thing to use, um, but just ask up front. And then beyond like their actual preferred payment method, what kind of payment timelines do they want to do? A lot of the times, photo editors will want to do every single house. So it's like uh, they send you the houses back that day and they send you an invoice with it. I would suggest that you find a photo editor that allows you to pay them either every other week or once a month. We pay our photo editor once a month. So uh, it makes it so much easier. We don't have to worry about just constantly keeping up with invoices. It's just one invoice once a month, you pay it and you're done. And the last two questions that I would say kind of go together that you need to ask is, uh, do they do digital twilights and do they do virtual staging? Digital twilights you can do yourself or you can send it to Box Brownie, but it is nice if you have them able to do it as well. Um, but then the virtual staging, it's really nice to be able to have uh, your photo editor be able to do virtual staging because if they can do it at the same time, uh, it creates a smaller and more efficient time frame so that you don't have to get the photo back from them and then send the photos off again to somebody else to be virtually staged. So instead of it being a two day turnaround time period, it's a one day turnaround. So it's really important if they can do the virtual staging, um, that's a big plus. All right, so next up is the method of uploading. This is something that we have tried many different things and I think we finally landed on that we really like. And I think the biggest conversation is always Dropbox or Google Drive. And we use Dropbox. So with Dropbox, there's a couple reasons that we use it. So one of the reasons is that it zips immediately when you download it. So on Google Drive, uh, if you upload all the photos on there, I'm sure a lot of you have come into this problem um, when you're photo editor is downloading them. It takes a long time for Google Drive to zip those together and then download. And then the same thing goes the other way when they are uploading to Google Drive and send it back to you, it takes a long time for them to zip and download. Dropbox being immediate, you know, you click download, it zips them and it 
it downloads it right away. That's a huge time savings. It really matters, especially when you're doing multiple houses. Um, I've seen it take upwards of 10 minutes to zip a folder on Google Drive, you know, times that by six houses. That's an hour of your day literally just waiting. If you can eliminate that, it's a big time savings. Dropbox also works really well with Teams. So we have their business advanced account. That is $30 per user per month with a minimum of three users. And so we actually have three users. Um, we have ourself. So everybody at the company uses the same login, they're the same user, and then we have the photo editor, and then we have the video editor. So those are the three accounts. It's $90 a month, but it is unlimited and everything works really well together. Dropbox also has previews on there where a lot of them don't. So we looked at box.com as another option. Um, they're great because they have unlimited storage, but they don't preview the thumbnail for the photos for our raw Sony file. So it kind of makes it a no for us. I want to be able to upload everything and make sure that the photos are correct that we uploaded. The last thing is that Google Drive does not process videos very quickly. So uh, I know that's, you know, obviously relevant to video and not photo, but a lot of you are also doing video, so this might be relevant to you. Uh, when a editor uploads a video, it takes, you know, it depends on the length and size of the video, but it can take a long time, you know, several hours to process the video for you to view it. If I'm just on a shoot and I'm just trying to check something real quick, I want to be able to look at the video, send back an edit and move on. And on Dropbox, it is immediate. So if they upload to our Dropbox account, I can click it, I can watch the video and I can make any kind of comments I need to right from there. It's a big time savings. And that's really why we use Dropbox versus Google Drive. And I just send Send them the Dropbox link and it works pretty seamlessly. That leads us right into communication. So communication is absolutely key. And I should have brought this up when you are uh, talking to your potential photo editors and you're communicating with them and you're asking them all of these questions, you need to make sure that they are communicating really well. It's really important that they speak um, at least you know, decent English. You want to be able to uh, communicate different problems, you know, maybe Photoshopping certain things. You don't want it to be a big uh, language barrier there to where you are having a really hard time getting your points across uh, and vice versa. So as you're asking all of those questions, really pay attention to how you're asking them and make, it, make sure that they are answering them back in a way that you are happy with communicating with them moving forward. We don't use Messenger. We don't use email. And I really suggest you not to do that. I know a lot of times, that is a way that you start communicating with people. Maybe you find somebody on Facebook and you're using Facebook Messenger. Maybe they suggest that you talk to them via email. But what we have done, and I suggest you guys to do, is we have a Slack channel or a Slack account. So Slack, if you're not familiar, it's basically just a um, instant messaging service for businesses. It's really uh, simple to use and it's pretty inexpensive. It's like $9 a month per user or something like that. But we have our whole team in there. And then we have the photo editor in there and our video editor in there. And so this is how I suggest you to do it. What we do is we have a couple different channels depending on uh, what we're doing. So we have a photos to edit channel. We have a completed photos channel and then same thing for video, you know, videos to edit completed videos. And we're able to, um, directly message the editors, but then we also have everything within the channel. So for photos to edit, at the end of the day, we post our Dropbox links in there. So maybe it'll be like four links uh, to different houses that we have organized in Dropbox. Uh, our editor sees that in Slack. They say, yep, got them, thank you. And then the next day they send all of the completed links back in the completed photos channel. Um, and it just keeps everything very simple, very organized, and there's really no confusion with it. So I feel like that is a great way to just you know, implement a simple system that makes everything uh, flow a little bit better. And then I also think there's a, a little side piece there that makes it even better of, you want your editors to feel like they're part of a team. If you're just, you know, sending them an email, here you go, here's another one, great, thanks. Uh, it just feels real cold, doesn't feel like they're really involved. And, you know, that might be okay at first, but I think as you're growing your team, you really want to make sure that you're building a culture and that includes the people that are overseas. So I think if you are uh, communicating with them daily, saying thank you, I appreciate you, I'm glad you're part of the team, you know, simple things that just make them feel like they're actually appreciated and not just this person that edits photos for cheap across the seas, I think you will get better results over time and they will want to stick with you. So just a side note there, I think building culture through um, something like Slack is a really good way to go. Next 
Next up is payment. Um, a lot of people, like I said before, want to use PayPal. PayPal is perfectly okay to use, but I should note that PayPal has a 3.5% uh, transaction fee for the person receiving the money. If I'm sending $1,000, they're getting $35 taken out of it. And uh, you can pay a little bit more if you want or if they are asking you to. So maybe instead of you paying a thousand, you're paying a thousand thirty five to cover that cost. But we actually use a service called Wise. It used to be called TransferWise. It is just basically another form of payment processing. And it does still take a fee, but it is much less. So it's directly connected to your bank account. Um, it deducts the money. And it takes about 40 minutes and they have the money directly in their bank account. And it uh, does the conversion rate online. You put in, you know, $1,000 USD, put it into whatever their currency is. And it's very simple. You know, that is not something that you have to do, but I wanted to bring it up in, in here that it is an option and it makes it faster for them to receive their money. So, you know, the more people that are happy, the better. So the very last thing is delivery and arguably the most important thing because this is how you get paid, kind of important. So when our editors uh, send us the links back that are in the completed photos channel in Slack. We don't keep them in Dropbox. What we do is we download them and put them in Lightroom. So we store everything in Lightroom. I have every photo I've ever taken, at least for the last like four years in Lightroom. There's something uh, like 70,000 photos in there. And we have it organized by uh, the folders are the client and then albums underneath it are the home. So the biggest reason that we download them to Lightroom other than keeping them forever in a nice organized way is that we like to put our own little touches on it. So, you know, the photos come back really, really nice. You know, I don't really have many complaints on it, but we do just want them to be perfect, honestly. So sometimes we'll put them in Lightroom, then bring them into Photoshop, remove a couple of wires or something like that. Just, you know, make the photos perfect. And that allows us to just have that quality control, that final piece uh, that we know we can trust the product that we're sending out. Our creative director uh, handles all of that for me. So uh, she downloads all the photos, puts them in Lightroom, does the quality control, and then uh, that brings us to the point of sending it off to the clients. So as a lot of you know, I use Show and Tour, love Show and Tour as a delivery service. So we take all those uh, photos out of Lightroom, export them, upload them to Show and Tour, and that is where we can house the photos, uh, the video, virtual tours, floor plan, basically any kind of media that we create. We put it all in show and tour. And it's just a great way to send the client a full resolution photo as well as uh, an MLS ready one because when you put it into show and tour, it gives you the option to automatically download either full res, MLS ready, or like a web version of a smaller image. So it's just really nice and simple. And I should mention that if you guys want to use show and tour, this is not sponsored by them, but I do have a code if you guys want to use it. Um, I think it's just Alex. Yeah, it's Alex and you get 50% off your first paid month. So um, I'll put a link down below to it if you guys want to go check it out. But uh, it's a great service. I've used it for a couple of years now. Highly recommend it. So that's really it, guys. That's A to Z, what we do for our uh, photo editing workflow. This also obviously relates pretty closely to video editing, even though there might be a couple uh, variables different there, like we're not putting the photo or we're not putting the videos in Lightroom, of course, but you get the idea. And uh, this has really worked well for us. It's sped things up a lot. You know, we're not communicating over email. Everything is just right there. It's able to be uh, searched through really easily. If you're like, where did that one house go? You can just search for it. It's really simple. This is what I suggest. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you think that you have something that uh, I should be changing, definitely open to that. We're always growing, always learning new things as well. Um, would love to hear your input. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.